The best bet can be defined so many different ways, and I look at this and I say, yes, it would be very good for the New York Giants to have both of these guys back on their roster. When you look at Daniel Jones, all last offseason, all we talked about was, is he the guy or not? And we criticized and we looked back at his career and we talked about, hey, he's had so many different coaches in his young career, and then Brian Dable comes in and stabilizes Daniel Jones, and this guy takes off career highs across the board and passing and rushing touchdowns, all of those things, every stat you can look at all the way to completion percentage, Daniel Jones rolls up the board. And when you look at that, two of his best receivers out there was Isaiah Hodges, who comes over from the practice squad from the Buffalo Bills, and then Darius Slayton, a receiver who the Giants drafted, but was kind of written off in the beginning of the season. So Vanilla Vic did this without a ton of weapons around him and figured out a way to get it done. And that's in year one with Dable. So to me, the amount of growth that he can make of still having him there, being with these coaching staff with another year, I think it's huge and it's a big upside opposed to bringing in a new guy and trying to teach him the system. And the same goes for Saquon. Now, I know the running back position is very different. I mean, you look at Isaiah Pacheco and him coming in and taking off as a seventh round draft pick for the Chiefs. But the difference is in New York, the offense revolved a lot around Saquon, and everybody kind of ate off of him, where for a guy like Pacheco, when you have Mahomes in there, yeah. it's a little bit different. Yeah, we got the question last night around, is this the best option? Mm -hmm. mm. Well, it's not the best option because he hasn't been the best quarterback, yeah. right? And Saquon's not been the best running back because he's been hurt, you know, and he's been out a bunch. 21 games I think he's missed so far uh, in his career. So it's not your best option. It's what you have at your feet right now. And it's one where that has a lot of success, right? The team got to the playoffs this year. They won a playoff game on the road, right? So there's success in this. They just don't want to pay through the nose. And I also like the idea of, hey, maybe if we end up having to franchise tag him and kind of prove that he can do this again in Brian Dable's offense, maybe it's one of those things where, you know, second year defensive coordinators have a better idea what to do against him. They present problems and he's not the guy and they can go look somewhere else. So I wouldn't mind a franchise tag here. If Saquon goes, we talked about this, the running backs in the new iteration of the NFL, the modern NFL, you can find running backs in a lot of different places. You look back at Super Bowl champions over the last decade or mm -hmm. so, they don't have a bell cow running back. Yeah. It just, it, it hasn't existed. There's been uh, running back by committee is what won you championships. Your time in New England, you understand that specifically. You had a bunch of running backs that were really good and complementary to one another. Yeah, definitely. And those running backs all played a role in an offense. Um, but I think the difference in New York is this is the best option because Saquon Barkley doesn't play a role. He is the star there, and Daniel Jones is a star. And we're talking about the New York football giants. This is where legends are made. Yesterday, Eli Manning's on the show. We have Sean O'Hara on the show. Yesterday, in just conversations, I talked about Justin Tuck and Michael Strahan. Like, this is what the New York Giants football is made of. So we look at the records over the last few years. This year, 2022, they go 9-7. and seven. And 21, 4-3. 26 and 10. 4 and 13. Like, like 4 and 13. Like, we look at these records. Mm -hmm. No one wants that in New York. They want a team that wins. So, you bring in Brian Dable. People are like, you know, let's give him some time. He'll figure it out. Right away, you just said it, Ryan. We go to the playoffs. We win a playoff game. So now, if I'm a New York Giants fan, I'm excited. This team's ready to go. So, even... Maybe there's a chance it's not your best option, per se, but what's your next option? Do we want to be stuck here and saying, like, oh, man, we got to hope this guy pans out. We got to see how it goes. The Giants are tired of wait till next year. Man, I'm telling you, in two years, we'll be fine. They want to see wins. They want to see wins now, and that's what happens when you're in New York. Jo Joe Shane's job is the business of the Giants. Mm -hmm. It's putting all the money together and the players and crafting the best roster and the best team. Brian Dable's job is best football, best product on the field. I'm curious in Brian Dable's first year as a head coach in New York, he did some kind of gutsy things, let's say, early at Tennessee. Some of those, like, yeah. two-point conversions he was going for, you're like, man, this guy. I almost think that Dable arrived and said, this is how I want to coach. This is the kind of team that I'm going to have. And then they kind of stumbled into some wins maybe even he wasn't expecting with the guys that he had. He's like, well, dang, maybe I can do it. I'm really curious what Brian Dable wants to do with this offense. Are these his two best options for his vision for this team because Joe Shane is going to say things like this. He's going to say I want them back. Of course. It would be 
it would be the headline if he said, I didn't want them back yesterday. Yeah. I always try to think of the reverse. But what does Dable want? What is the direction that Dable is taking this team? Is this the identity or is it, no, I need more wideouts. I'm going to go running back by committee. I'm going to, where is the money going to be invested from Dable's perspective? That's what I'm most curious about. And I about. think, too, when you talk about best options, Daniel Jones hasn't been the best, but it's like, all right, what's available? Are Derek Carr is available. Do we think if we bring Derek Carr in, is that an instant upgrade over Daniel Jones? Saquon Barkley, all right, Josh Jacobs is a free agent as well, but he's probably going to cost more than a Saquon Barkley. So I think when we say best, to your point, by committee, you can go out and get some other guys. Like Kareem Hunt's a free agent. Dante Foreman's a free agent. So you can find ways to mix it. They 100% need more receivers in there mm -hmm. as weapons around him. But best option to me, if I'm the Giants, build off of what you were able to do last year. Peter, you mentioned that Daniel Jones changed agencies, and now the number that people are hearing that he requires matches up with probably the market for quarterbacks right now. How do you think the Giants should proceed here? number that was thrown out early was $45 million, which would blow out the market for quarterbacks. And I think a lot of Giants fans rolled their eyes and said, if he wants $45 million, go find it. Like, I don't, I don't know where you're going to find it. And I think that when you change your agency at this point, six days from free agency, it tells you that maybe he wasn't thrilled. Now, what Tom mentioned, which is really interesting, said he's hired the same group that represented Dak Prescott through his recent contract negotiations. Dak Prescott, of course, was franchise tag for one year and then did sign that massive extension with the Dallas Cowboys. In a way, maybe this is one of those deals where Daniel Jones says, I'll take the franchise tag, the average of the top five salaries. It's going to be something around $33 million, maybe a little bit higher when it all comes out in the wash for next year. Kick the can, and then we do this all over again next year. And then if he wants to be franchise tag again, the number escalates even more. Uh, he would be the youngest quarterback ever franchise tagged at 26 years old. This is his rookie contract being franchise tagged. So rare that a rookie contract isn't picked up on the fifth year option, which was what the case was with Daniel Jones. But to your point, Jamie, Joe Shane didn't draft Daniel Jones. Brian Dable did not draft Daniel Jones. They inherited Daniel Jones. And I don't think even them expected the season that he had. Um, but at 45 million, no, that's not going to be the number for Daniel Jones. Is there some wiggle room and is there a way? Uh, franchise tag does seem like the most likely option, especially with the agency that he just brought in. That's a huge cap hit, though, that New York would have to take on just in that single season yep. to franchise tag him. But again, it does give them one more year of trying to figure out what direction they're going in at that position in particular. Shregs, thank you.